Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I just want to take a moment and talk about these uh, AK-47 80% receivers that Arms of America has in stock right now. Um, they're 100% made in Poland and they're $69.95. That's pretty good for a black oxide, 100% heat treated, you know, 80% receiver that's, you know, made 100% in Poland. So all you'd have to do is, you know, punch the holes for your rivets for your front and rear trunnion. Uh, punch the hole for your safety and punch the holes for your access pins. Now, this is a great deal. It's it's like unbelievable. So I had to pick up a couple of them. But I'm kind of wondering, what is the hardness of these? So I did some research and I found specs from, uh, I, I believe the Soviet spec is 36 to 45 Rockwell C, or it's equivalent to Rockwell C. And uh, I've seen specs like 35 to 40 uh, Rockwell C hardness for the receivers and the reason you want that you know that hardness level somewhere in between there is because you want it hard enough to be able to withstand the kind of abuse a firearm puts up with so your receiver doesn't you know bend or flex you know too excessively uh, but light enough so that when it does shoot and you get that barrel whip that the receiver can bend and flex a little bit and doesn't just crack or shatter anything like that so I had to make a, uh, I actually own a couple of different Rockwell hardness testers and uh, I had to make an anvil or, uh, or a table, if you will, um, and harden it to be able to properly, because they're already pre-bent uh, with, with a center support rivet too, uh, with the rails welded in. Um, they're all ready to go for the most part. You just got to start punching your holes, like I said, but I had to make a different custom anvil for the Rockwell hardness tester so I could actually do this test, you know, properly. So we're going to go over to the Rockwell Hardness Tester, and we're going to set these up. Uh, we're going to take a quick look at them first, though. All right, here are the two receivers we have. These are the 80% from Arms of America. As you can see, there's a center rivet, and the rails are welded in. You can see the weld marks. And we got the YXY stampings. And we look on the other side, and because it's a Polish, there's the C and the P for auto and semi. No other markings to speak of until you look inside the receiver. And you'll note that on the front trunnion area on both of these, you can see, if I can get this to be in focus, there's an HM stamping right here. See if we can get that better light on that. There we go. See that HM stamping? So that would be in the front receiver area. And in the rear receiver area, this receiver has a G. And then the second receiver we have is stamped with an H. And then again, in the front portion of the receiver, the HM stamp again, or at least what it looks like an H and M stamping to me. So these are our receivers, and what we're going to do is, uh, it's kind of nice that one's a G and, and one's an H. We're going to see if uh, there's any difference between the two. If there might be a variance, you know, who knows, you know, because obviously this is one lot run and this is another lot run, or at least that's what I'm assuming from those different stampings, or maybe different assembly lines, who knows. I don't know, that's for sure, but if any of you guys know, let us know down in the comments, please. So anyhow, uh, fully heat treated, 80% receivers. What we're going to do is we're going to be using the Rockwell C-Scale, which means that we got to use a diamond. So the diamond tip that we are using is, let's see if we can get this in focus. I don't want to focus. Come on, focus. The DKM54671. And there's a diamond that's been brazened to the tip and then ground. And so you guys know the Rockwell hardness test we're using is the Goko Seki Works, made in Japan. This is their hardness tester. Um, this one I like a lot, and uh, it's it's barely used. So this is the hardness test we're using, and we'll get one of those receivers chucked up and start taking some measurements. All right, so we have our G receiver sitting in here. We're going to give this... Uh, three tests and we're going to do an average and then we'll put the H receiver in there and do three tests and get an average and so here we go I'm going to preload this one two and three get that zero set and 
Now we're going to plunge into the material. We got 150 kilograms. We got about 12 inches of leverage. This is a little over 300, uh, 25 pounds, 350 pounds somewhere in there. And then once our arms all the way down, we're going to give it about another 10 seconds. And just so you guys know, you should uh, always clear off any of the black oxide or any of the finish on any of the steel that you're trying to test. But for all intents and purposes, this is a diamond, so it will make it through that black oxide finish. We're going to go back and, okay, looks like we got 29.5 on that first one. So now we're going to go down and move it over and try it again. You gotta want to go far enough away because when you when you push that diamond in the metal, it's gonna kind of expand that little area. So you move far enough away so you're not going to get into that any any weird readings. Zero that out. Let the weight come down. A nice crush on that. And like I said, once the lever goes down, give it 10 seconds, 15 seconds. And when you lift this lever up, it measures how far that diamond penetrated the steel, and that's how it figures out how, or excuse me, what the hardness is. And on that one, sorry guys, you're kind of in the way of the machine, so it looks like we're at 31.5. All right, let's go down, do a 31 to an, or do a third test in our G receiver. And the reason this is going nice and slow is you have the weight back here on the leverage and then you have um, it's, it's basically a oil filled valve that controls how fast this comes down and that's why you see that arm over here slowly come down uh, you have to have a specific viscosity and you can also adjust that valve uh, right now the shop is 68 degrees Fahrenheit which is the kind of the <laughs> universal standard for uh, lab equipment Looks like that was another exactly 31.5. All right. And that was our G receiver. So we got 29.5 and then a 31.5 and a 31.5. Now we've got our H receiver. Let's see if we can get a... Yep, there we go. There's the H receiver. Focus. Here we go. I'm going to set our H receiver in there. Right about there. Okay. We'll load this one up. Oh, and just so everyone knows who, uh, who knows all about uh, Rockwell hardness testers. I'm sorry, I had to refocus. Um, I did actually test mine on a test puck. And it did hit 63.3 so we're we're right where we need to be this one is adjusted for lack of a better word perfect all right let's go up and three there's zeroed drop the lever Count out 10 seconds. Make sure everything's going good. Okay. It looks like 36.5 for that one. 
go. All right, let's move her on over. Drop the lever. And then count out 10 seconds. Sorry guys if this is boring. Uh, this is kind of what you got to do to go through this kind of stuff. <laughs> Make sure that it penetrates through everything. We got a good clean reading. Obviously, you can tell when the needle is not doing anything, it's gone as far as it's going to go. Turn back nice and slow. Some people uh, rip these handles back. I've noticed that you get a more accurate reading when you nice and slowly just, you know, treat it like a piece of lab equipment, like it is. Looks like we got 36.5 again. All right. Move over and do our third hit right there. Adjust to zero, just a hair, and drop the lever. And the reason they want any kind of surface stuff off there is so you have a more accurate reading. Honestly, with black oxide and the diamond going through it, um, I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. Most likely a point, you, you know, point three positive, or negative, maybe. Excuse me. I really don't see it being that big of a difference, but that's what they always recommend. And if you can get a machine surface and blah blah blah, so they want the uh, the metal in its most quote unquote perfect state. That isn't going any more any further. And looks like our third is another thirty six point five. So that's kind of interesting. So get this receiver out of here, and just so you guys can see what it looks like, I'll try to do a close up of this. And this is what your piece of metal is going to look like when you're done testing it. You're going to have these three tiny little divots. If we can get that to focus, please. There we go. There's three little divots. And then on our G, three little divots. And I can just refinish re these. So it's kind of interesting how on our H, uh, it got 36.5 across the board, and our G was uh, 29.5, 31.5. Um, kind of interesting results there. Um, as far as uh, what, what we're supposed to be getting is technically 36 to 45, 30 to 40. Um, we're really kind of coming up shy right on this, on this G receiver, unfortunately. And it looks like we're uh, we're in the ballpark here with the H receiver. Oh, well, our G receiver was 29.5, and then 31.5, and then 31.5 again. Average that out three ways, and you get 30.8 for an average. And our H receiver was 36.5 all three times, so it's 36.5, and uh, that's totally in the ballpark. This H receiver is good to go, ready to be built, um, ready to have a parts kit put on it, and. I don't know how I feel about this G. Um, I think before I accidentally said 30, the spec is the specs that I found are 36 to 45 and 35 to uh, 45 or 35 to 40, excuse me. So those are the specs I've seen. So I haven't seen any spec lower than 35. Um, this one coming in at 30.8. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest with you. Um, it's close, but uh, it only works in horseshoes and hand grenades. So I might either try to reheat treat this or uh, uh, I don't know maybe you tell me what you guys think down in the comments um, but it, it would suck to get you know a seven eight nine hundred dollar uh, kit um, and then have to buy a barrel and then put it all together and after you know 
500, maybe a couple thousand rounds end up having a problem where you start getting uh, egged out holes where your access pins are, or, um, you know, uh, anything where your rivets are going through, maybe have an issue that that would just suck because you put all that uh, time and effort into the build. So anyhow, that's all I got for you guys. So let me know if you guys have a G or an H receiver. And if you have a Rockwell hardness tester, let me know uh, down in the comments, please, because I think this kind of stuff is interesting. Um, and remember that uh, loose is fast, brakes only slow you down, and when they say it's 100% heat treated, what does that really mean? Be safe and have fun on the range, guys. We'll see you later.